We're doing some digging here on the bank and uh, through here you have a mineralized zone that's about 30 meters wide. A lot of it's covered by this road fill here, but uh, there's a couple nice veins that were discovered in the 70s. They intersected a quartz vein from drilling there. They intercepted a 25 foot or 5 meter wide zone here with disseminated mineral as well as a 2.36 meter wide almost solid mineralized vein somewhere in this zone and uh, we've done all this digging by hand to expose a lot of what's in here finding lots of good samples um, this took days and days to dig out and uh, what we have is we got some samples here I'll show you kind of like the average ones that we're pulling out and the host rock and different mineralization. So here's one of the kinds of your host rock here. Gray silicus unit. It's almost chert-like. This is technically classified as quartz. And you can see the little bits of disseminated iron pyrite through it. That's your bedrock. And that's pretty consistent throughout most of this 30 meter zone. And even outside the 30 meter zone, you see this all over the place over a stretch of about five kilometers. And then you have all these little zones like this that contain good mineralization. So this 25 foot zone right here, five meter zone, is full of this stuff here. So this sample here is from the, the five meter wide mineralized zone with disseminated mineral. And this is your typical bedrock or host rock in this zone. Both have mineral, but this one here, you can see it's a bit darker. That contains, on average, about 3 to 5% uh, zinc and 1% to 2% lead. And you'll have a little bit of copper in there as well. So that's, that's the 5 meter wide zone. So it's a nice showing on its, on its own with that much mineral and just the, the host rock. Over there, you have a quartz vein, which was intersected in the 70s as well. This is a little hunk from that. Moving on here, you have all these little areas with stringers and a little bit more mineral disseminated in there. You can see again, you have your dark host rock, which is containing zinc and lead. And then you have patches here, which are containing zinc and lead. And that patch right in the corner there, if you were to take an XRF of that, you'd be looking at about 25% zinc and about 7 to 10% lead. You have a lot more bands like this as well. This is a 4 centimeter thick solid mineral band. And uh, you can see this dark stuff here. That's actually sphalerite. So if I were to test that, you'd be looking at about 30 to 35%. Uh, zinc and this stuff here is a mix of pyrotite and pyrite this right here also has sphalerite in it you're looking at about 25 percent for your zinc content and about seven to ten percent for lead so it's a mix of galena and sphalerite and you can see the difference here this darker stuff when you see it just means there's a higher iron content you can also have Sphalerite, which is red. So in here again, you got more galena and sphalerite and uh, This is a nice sample if I were to send this into a lab. I'd be looking at getting 25% uh, For zinc and about five to ten percent lead So here's another nice sample here Again a mix of sphalerite and galena primarily sphalerite similar ratio you have about 25% zinc in this about 7 to 10 percent on your lead side and uh, if you were to actually take this in and send it in for an analysis with gold and silver which we have done to multiple of these samples 
This stuff here will run about a thousand grams per ton silver and between three and 10 grams per ton gold. A couple more samples here I just wanted to point out. I don't know if you can see this stuff right here. Will you see this in areas where there's high cadmium content? So there is a good one to 2% cadmium in some of these. So you'll have some cadmium somewhere along in here. This stuff here in the back is is all sphalerite. This is all sphalerite and galena. Another couple samples I'll point out here. This stuff here, this white stuff, is actually barite and quartz. So Barite is actually a commodity in itself, and if you got enough of it, it can be valuable. Barite is also often associated with VMS deposits, which this is a VMS deposit. All up in here, again, you got your good sphalerite and galena content up in here. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to run through a bunch of samples that we pulled out, and uh, we're going to dig a bit more. Did a bit more digging, and here are some of the samples we pulled out. And you can see that right there from your cadmium. A bit of quartz in there as well. So you can see the obvious difference here between this dark stuff in there and the bit more shiny looking stuff in there. Well, this has a Galena content. This stuff will just be sphalerite. See how brittle sphalerite is. Again, obvious difference between your Galena infused sphalerite and your sphalerite here with a higher iron content. Less of a luster. See that band in there? Silvery looking stuff, that's actually pyrotite. That's banded in between your sphalerite and galena. Another good example of your sphalerite with no galena. Nice and dark versus your stuff here with a little bit more Galena content. And this one's got a good amount of pyrotite, calcopyrite and pyrite. You can see the calcopyrite up in there, a little bit more golden.
This is kind of a nice mix with uh, Galenus Valorate, Calcopyrate, Pyrate, Pyrotate. Got some Barite in there. And here is the last chunk we got for you. And this is basically just a solid hunk of mineral. This will run you 35% easy for your zinc content, 10% for lead. You're probably going to have about 500 grams per ton silver, 5 to 7 grams per ton gold, 1% copper, 1% cadmium. So we've pulled out hunks from this area that are 20 times this size, 50 times this size. We've pulled out 50 centimeter wide hunks of vein from the bank. It's really dusty now, so we can't see a whole lot here, but that's it guys. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time. Peace.